Uh, welcome back. We're going to be going into uh, details of how uh, figuring pre-production um, was done. Funding is one of the most critical aspects, you know, of filmmaking. Every time an idea comes to me, I call the original writer, we discuss it, and we agree. There are loads of people out there with, you know, a lot of ideas. And casting wise, you know, why Ramsey Noah and uh, why Fonla Lao Fiebe? Why Omoni Oboli? Why all these guys? Hello? Um, it's Femi Badmas. We met at. Uh... I know who you are. You're the guy who ran out on me at the Fajiri's party. I apologize. Um, you can do that in person. Uh,. The sports bar, 7 p.m. Pick me up. Tonight? Uh, where, where is that? Find out. Where, where, where do you live? Oh my, Jaffo and Mommy Lady Nikkei. I wanted to do something that is multilingual. I wanted to do something that cut across more. Also for commercial reason, I was also looking to have some of the, you know, uh, known um, um, actors, talent, you know, in the film. And that was the first thing that um, informed Ramsey Noah. Um, a lot of times before I take final decision, I always, um, I usually will run things by the likes of Bosse, Oshi, and, you know, Padnebo, you know, and all of that. And uh, I ran it by them, and they're like, okay, why not? You know, they haven't worked with him before. You know, so I rigged out, and I, I, I sent him a text, and I, I proposed a meeting. We've never met before then, you know, I mean, officially, maybe we've seen each other, one another at functions, but, you know, then he agreed. So we met somewhere on the island, and uh, I said to him, look, I want to make this film, and it's a type nobody has ever made. And he said, okay, tell me what makes it different. And I said, do you first tell me, can you be on a set for one month? Because usually at that time, film production takes four days, five days, everybody's done, and they're moving to another project. So this is a guy who wants to do a film, and our schedule says we're going to be on set for minimum of four weeks. We ended up shooting for like eight weeks, you know, but original schedule says minimum four weeks. And I said, it depends, you know, that, you know, what. Well, it depends on what is on the table. It depends on the story. And when he said it turns on, I said, okay, maybe this is where I'll get you. Eventually, by the time we went back and forth and a little bit, we shook hands and we had a drink. And today it's all history. It was such a privilege, you know, working with Ramsey because he was such a professional. <laughs> It's got virtually everything that um, Nollywood actually lacks in story writing, you know, script writing. And when I read the script, I was like really thrilled that this can come out from Nollywood. A lot of people didn't know this, but originally Ramsey was supposed to uh, play Shola and I was meant to play Femi. Uh, but this we changed like three or four days to shoot, even after like two months of pre-production. Four days to shoot, I was just uh, thinking, and it came to mind that he's always played the playboy in almost all the films that he has done. So that would be, you know, more of, I mean, I know that it's a cliche if he's playing the same thing in this film. Then I got to the office in the morning during the production meeting and I said to them, the crew, I mean the team, that, look, I think Ramsey should play Femi and I should play Shola. And everybody just looked, first looked at me like, is he crazy? Uh, we've, we've done, uh, you know, production meeting and all of that for like two months and it's four days to shoot, you just want to change this. Then I broke it down and I said, look, guys, let people see Ramsey in another light. Let, let's not, you know, spoon feed. I mean, for me, someone, a lot of people, you know, perceive me as, uh, of course, a slow talker and maybe a slow actor or something. 
but he perceived Ramsey as the sharp guy and all of that. So I said, let's let's swap. <laughs> Best actors, uh, you know, lead actor, Ama. A lot of times, once we set to shoot, and I, I do this with every actor, even in even on all my other films, I always, for some reason, will know that scene that will get them, you know, that accolade and the trophy. And you know, I always build very good relationship with my actors, and that is why everybody who has worked with me today, you know, we're still friends, and I always look forward to working with them again. You know, so that was how um, um, Ramsey got on board. Then uh, we had a massive audition and, you know, we opened it up. And I was looking for someone to play Mona. Omoni was not, in terms of look, my idea of Mona. Uh, but we got in touch with Caroline Chikese. Caroline was one of the, she's one of the Nigerians in Hollywood. And at that time, she just did, uh, she did one big Hollywood film. And uh, we went back and forth a little bit. We agreed, you know, to terms and all. But at the time we were meant to start filming, she said that, they were, I think they were doing pilot shooting in LA at that time. So, and she was asking if we could move, uh, you know, shift the shoot. And uh, I said to her, there's no way we couldn't, you know, so we had to recast. I don't know, for some reason, I was just looking for someone especially for marketing reason. I was looking for like a big, not big, big, but a Nigerian who is doing well in diaspora, you know? And um, uh, and then Osas, Osas' name came up. And um, I think I wrote to her a few times. She replied maybe once. I'm talking 2009. And eventually, Ramsey introduced me to Omoni Obodi, by the way. And, she came for a reading, and after the reason, I was convinced that, you know, she could do it. And I said to her, hey, you're doing this. And and that was how money got on board. When I came for the reading, and Kuli was like, okay, fine, you're good enough for this part. But I need you to read the script and then decide if you want to do it or not. And I read the script, and I sent him a text immediately, and I'm like, if I'm not part of this film, I'm going to die. Are you kidding? <laughs> this film is awesome. <laughs> Uh, Fumi Lola, uh, from Lola Ofiebi, of course, uh, has been in the scene for, for a while. And I've always wanted to work with her because of, of, because of her versatility and all of that. And um, I called her also. And, uh, you know, that was how we got her. Tosin Sido, uh, a, a lot of people always make the mistake of casting someone who is not, who is not mixed race. You will cast... Ramsey's parents as two black people. Then you cast someone who is also another black person as, you know, uh, the sister or brother. And, you know, a lot of us don't pay attention to that. So, I mean, casting is one of the most crucial aspects of filmmaking. And, you know, if you get it wrong, it affects everything. So for me, I, if anybody was going to play Ramsey's sister, then the person would have to be mixed race. And we didn't have to deal with the issue of uh, who is going to play the mother because we decided that, oh, okay, we're never going to feature the mother. We assumed she was dead, even though we didn't mention it. But the father was black, so it could have been that the mother was white or something. But 
is 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 not that is not the bone of contention in the film. So you can get away with that. So Stosin Sido came and because she was mixed, you know, she fit in well. And you know, she she also did very well. Um a lot of the other actors, you know, like um uh Chief Murai no Uyelami, that role was meant to be played by Professor Wale Shoenka. And during Reiki and all of that, through my uh, mentor, Tune Kelani, I wrote to Prof. And, uh, you know, Prof read his script and uh, he responded that, I mean, he, he, he really liked the script and requested for a meeting. So TK and I and Bosse, and I think Sheon, we went to Abelkuta to have a meeting with Professor Wale Shoenka. And Prof said, look, Kore, um, I'm, I don't think I'm going to have the time. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm busy traveling. And I said, Prof, I'll film you anywhere in the world. Just tell me, just agree to do the role. And Prof said, OK, no problem. Let's, I'll give it a shot. But like he rightly said, he said his time won't permit. But look, we met Chief Moreno Oyelami, the Acer of Iragbiji. That man was one of the talent. I encountered with him, opened my mind to a lot of a lot of things. He made things so easy for us in terms of filming. As a matter of fact, we use his gallery and his entire house, you know, for filming. And he also played uh, the role of the professor in um, the figurine. Ara Romiri, goddess of fortune and luck. According to folklore legend, anyone touched by Ara Romiri will be rewarded with seven years of prosperity, abundance of rain. Rivers and streams will be filled with fish. Mm. Women will bear only sons. Palm wine will flow. Crops will flourish. But thereafter, there will be seven years of destruction. The wine will become poison. Waters will dry. Crops will fail. And your sons will rot. You know, that was how my relationship started with uh, Chief Moreno. And after that, we've done quite a number of things together. Uh, but the thing is, like I said, you know, when you are casting and um, if one door is locked, you know, don't lock your mind. In fact, sometimes if you're not really sure, leave it till later and continue. I've done this a lot of times and I've never gone wrong. You know, I want to shoot something. In fact, sometimes I will do casting, audition, and I won't find someone that I want. And last minute, you know, this thing will just come and uh, the person will just fit in you know, perfectly. You know, so that was how we got Chief Moreno who allowed me to play, um, you know, the professor. Then Kate Adekwegba, who is also one of the veteran actors, she played my mother on the set of, uh, you know, one of the Super Story series. And, you know, um, like I said, that was why I always ensure that it's a blend of the old school and also the new school, and maybe in between school as well, if there's anything like that. And, um, you know, she played like my sugar mommy or something in the film. And all the other actors, you know, Wale Shogo, who played the head of KD, Padero Poco, you know, who played the uh, security, you know, at the gate. Gogo, may so rest in peace, who played the priest in the beginning of the film. <laughs> Everybody brought their skills to the film and he made it, you know, remarkable. And that is why up till today the film is being talked about, you know, and I'm really glad that, you know, I work with such amazing, you know, team. Um, you know, after the, the, the cast, the casting, then the crew, you know, got locked and I got some of the best hands, you know, to handle things 
um, you know, on that set. And, you know, it was such a remarkable um, experience. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna be today on Film Masterclass with Kunle Afolayo from the perspective of the figuring Ara Ramirez. We've done the developmental stage, we've done uh, um, pre-production, you know, and, and as part of pre-production, we've done um, uh, casting, we've done um, um, recce, we've done funding, uh, we've done um, how the crew came about. In the next episode, we're going to be discussing production. Um, I want to believe that you've learned one or two things, you know, from this episode. And I look forward to sharing a lot more. In the meantime, follow us on our social media, on Instagram, at Kunle Afolayo, at Golden Effect Pictures, at Cap Television. Mm -hmm.